Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at bubble sort. Okay, so bubble sort is one of two sort algorithms that you need to know for uh, for A-level, and you'll also find bubble sort at uh, IB Diploma, uh, and there's also mention of it in IGCSE. So bubble sort is, uh, yeah, it's a really useful algorithm, uh, one of the most common sorting algorithms that you'll learn about at this stage of your computer science education. Um, okay, so here we have some playing cards that are gonna represent my, my data values. Okay, so as you can see, these cards are numbered uh, and they are currently not in any order. Okay, so we are gonna use a bubble sort algorithm to uh, sort these into ascending order, which means the smallest one should be over here and the largest one should be up here. Okay, so let's see how bubble sort works. So basically, um, bubble sort requires you to make several passes through the data. So a pass is basically when you work from start to finish and then you kind of have to do that multiple times until you're sorted with a bubble sort. Um, so in each pass, you basically look at each consecutive pair of elements. So first we're going to look at these two, then we're going to look at these two, and then these two, and so on. And all you ask yourself is, are these two out of order? And if they are, you swap them. Okay, so let's try it. So first we're comparing two and six as your first pair. Are two and six out of order? Remember, it's an ascending sort, so you're going to expect uh, the smallest card to be here and the larger card to be here. So obviously these two are not out of order, so we leave them. Now we look at the next pair, these two, six and five. Six and five are out of order, so we swap them over. Okay, so we move that out, bring that one up, and put that in there. Now we move on up and we look at the next pair, up here. Okay, so are six and eight out of order? No, they're not, so we leave them. Now we look at eight and four, are eight and four out of order? Yes, they are, so we're going to swap them over. Then we look at the next pair, 8 and 3. Are 8 and 3 out of order? Yes, they are, so we'll swap them. Okay, and we have now completed our first pass through the, uh, the set of data. So one thing with the bubble sort is, uh, after every pass, the biggest remaining unsorted value will find its way into the sorted position. So the first pass, nothing was sorted, and our biggest card was 8. And you can see after the pass, it's kind of bubbled up to the top. Okay, so the next thing, you can see that uh, if uh, amongst our unsorted data, which is the other five, the biggest one we have is six. So on the next pass, we should expect to see six uh, come, up, uh, come up to the top here. Okay, so let's start our next pass. So we look at two and five, they're fine. Five and six, they're fine. Six and four, these, are, these ones are out of order, so we swap them. Six and three, out of order, so we swap them. Six and eight, in order, so we leave them alone. Okay, uh, so yes, yeah, you can see that exactly what we predicted did in fact happen. Six has come up into its uh, sorted and final position. Okay, let's do our next pass. So we look at two and five, they're fine. Five and four, out of order, we gotta swap them. Five and three, out of order, we gotta swap them. Five and six, they're fine. Six and eight, also fine. Okay, so two, four, three, five, six, eight. We're not quite done yet, so we need one more pass. Two and four, they are fine. Four and three, they need to be swapped. Four and five is okay. Five and six is okay. Six and eight is okay. And uh, now we can look at what we have. Two, three, four, five, six, eight. You can see our cards are now in order. So our swap, uh, our sort is finished. Okay, so that is the basic idea behind uh, bubble sort. Uh, so now we're going to look at a uh, an example. We're going to start thinking a little bit more about the the more specific steps that are involved, as well as some variables that we'll need, and then we're going to code up some examples. Okay, so let's take a closer look at bubble sort. Um, so I've got five values here, they're out of order, uh, and we're going to follow a bubble sort algorithm to get them into order. Um, so this is just going to be the same as the card example, um, but I've just got one new concept here, and that is the idea of temp. Um, so basically, if we want to swap two values over, we can't actually do that directly. Okay, um, there's no way that I can grab this seven and put it here at the same time that I grab that one and put it there. I have to let go of this seven. I have to put it somewhere. I've got to store it somewhere um, while I'm swapping. Okay, so you're gonna see how that works with temp and then we're gonna go and code uh, three different versions of bubble sort. We're gonna start with the basic version, the easiest to understand, and then I'm gonna show you uh, two different ways that we can optimize it um, to make bubble sort as efficient as possible. Okay, so uh, let's go through our algorithm. So we're gonna compare four and one. So assuming that we're doing an ascending order sort, meaning we should have the smallest over here and the largest over here, these two are out of order. So what do we do? Um, we grab 
uh, the four. We put it over in our temp and we move the one into the four spot. Then we go back to the temp and copy that over uh, into this spot. Uh, now you can also do this the other way around. It doesn't actually matter. So if we go back to our original position, uh, we could put the one over here, move the four over and then put the one back in this spot. Um, makes no difference. You can do it either way. Okay, uh, so now that we swap these, we're going to jump to the next pair. Okay, so now we're comparing four and seven. These are in order. These are okay. No swap required. So we're going to move to the seven and nine. Uh, these are also okay. They're in order. No swap required. So now we're going to move to the nine and the zero. Okay, so nine and zero are out of order. So let's put the nine over here, zero here, and nine up at the top. Okay, so we've completed the first pass of the bubble sort algorithm. Now, what happens after every pass is that one item becomes sorted in its correct and final position. And that's always uh, uh, kind of towards the top. So because this is our first pass, we have one sorted item here, that's this nine. Okay, um, so now we go back to the start and we keep going. So one and four are in order, four and seven are in order, seven and zero are not in order. So let's grab the seven, move it over here, put the zero back here, put the seven up here. Okay, now we're gonna compare seven and nine and they're in order. Now, and then this, was, this is gonna to connect to one of the optimization tricks that I'm gonna show you uh, later. There is no need to actually compare seven and nine here because we know that nine is already sorted. So there's no point in doing this comparison between seven and nine. So we're gonna code something that uh, prevents that. Okay, uh, back to the start. So compare one and four, they're in order. Four and zero are not in order. So let's grab the four, put it in temp. Uh, move the zero here, grab the four and put it there, uh, and then keep going. Now, again, these comparisons are pointless because these are already sorted. So they were wasting time by checking these t uh, th uh, this one and this one. Okay, back to the beginning, we're almost done. So one and zero are out of order. Let's grab the one, put it in temp, move the zero here, put the one back. These are in order, these are in order, these are in order. Back to the start, and we have now finished. Okay, you can see that we are sorted. Okay, uh, so that is basically how bubble sort works. We do lots of little swaps, uh, and then after every pass, uh, one element is guaranteed to be in its correct position. So let's code the most basic version of bubble sort. So let's get some data. I'm actually just gonna copy this over from somewhere else. Um, all right then, so we're gonna do bubble sort one. So the first version of bubble sort. All right, um, so basically we need two loops. So the outer loop is gonna control the number of passes that we do. Uh, let me put that in as a comment. Okay, so basically there is a relationship between the number of passes required and the number of elements. Basically you need to do one pass for every element. Okay, so I've got five, uh, five elements here, I need to do five passes to start them. So we're gonna do for i in range zero to the length of our data. So this will guarantee that we do the correct number of passes. Um, within each pass, we also need to loop through everything, right? So we're gonna do nested for loops. So we've got uh, for J in range. Uh, now we do zero again. Now this one, we do uh, length of data. However, we do length of data minus one. The reason for the minus one is that basically J is gonna be uh, our, our pointer for looking at specific elements. And we're gonna be comparing J with J plus one. So if I go all the way to length of data, i.e. the final element, and I try to compare it, if this is j and I try to do j plus one, we're gonna be pointing at nothing over here. That's gonna give us an error. Uh, so we do length of data minus one. Okay, uh, and then we do a simple if statement to check if, uh, if two elements are in the wrong order. So we do if data j is greater than data j plus one. Okay, so if this is data j and this is data, uh, data j plus one, we're, we're, we're checking to see if zero is bigger than one, right? Basically, are they out of order? If this was a descending sort, which is possible by the way, then all you gotta do is swap uh, the symbol. Okay, but we're uh, just gonna kind of assume it's a default version with the ascending sort. Okay, so if they're out of order, then we do our, our swap involving the temp variable. So we define temp, and I'm gonna do temp equals data j. Okay, so that is the, let me put these out of order so I can demonstrate the swap. Okay, so if this is j, then that moves over into temp. 
Okay, now we do data j equals data j plus 1. Okay, so this is data j plus 1, and we're moving that into data j. So now we've got the hole over here at data j plus 1. So we fill in that hole by doing data j plus 1 equals temp. Okay, so that brings our value in from temp and completes the swap. Okay, um, so that is everything. Uh, so let's run it. Okay, uh, so let's call bubble sort one. Uh, first, let's print our data and verify that it's not sorted. Okay, so you can see it's all out of order there. Bubble sort one, and let's look at the data again, and you can see the data is in order. Fantastic, so that works perfectly. So I mentioned two efficiency improvements that you can do. So let's look at the first one, which is a really simple change. Um, so I'm actually going to copy and paste this algorithm because I'm only going to change one line. Okay, so bubble sort two. Uh, let me remove this comment. Okay, there's a little change that we can do right here where we do length data minus one. Now, because if you remember, after every pass, one element becomes sorted up at the, the top, up at the end of the, of, of the array. So that means that on each pass, we need to do one fewer check than we did the previous time. Right? Um, let's put these out of order so I can demonstrate like a fresh one. So if we're starting this, okay, and then I swap zero and one, okay, and then I swap, okay, don't need to swap one and seven, seven and nine, nine and four, swap over. Okay, so that time I need, to, I need to compare these two, that's one, these two, that's two, these two, that's three, and these two, that's four. Next time, I'm not gonna need to involve this one. So I only need to check these two, these two, and these two. That's only three comparisons, okay? So after I do all that, the seven will be in the right place. Uh, the next time, I, next time I pass, I've only got to compare these two, that's one, and these two, that's two, okay? Uh, and the four will be in the right place. Next time, I've only got to compare these two, that's only one. So on each pass, I need to check, I need to do one fewer comparison than the last time. So thankfully we have something counting how many passes we've done, and that is i. So we can just subtract i from this, uh, and it's still gonna work the same, but it's not gonna waste time uh, comparing things that are already in the right place. Okay, so we, we subtract i from that. So let's run and just double check that we didn't break it. Okay, so let's verify our data is out of order, and let's run bubble sort two. And let's look at our data, and you can see that it is in order, has been sorted, just like the first one. So by subtracting i, we are saving uh, quite a few passes from our uh, from our algorithm. Okay, so um, the the cool thing about bubble sort, which makes it uh, a more efficient choice than insertion sort in some cases, not all, definitely not all, in some cases, is. Um, we have a possibility to quit early if we can detect that the data is already sorted. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's say this is a fresh, fresh bubble sort, right? We've been given this, this data to sort. We go through it, we, we do this comparison. Okay, we don't have to swap, don't need to swap, don't need to swap, don't need to swap, and then we've reached the end. We can actually say, okay, well, we didn't have to swap anything that time, so the data must be in order, so we can stop right away. But with this for loop setup, because this is a count controlled loop, it's always going to repeat for the full number of passes, no matter what we do. Uh, we're going to, we would be stuck going through the whole thing. We would compare, uh, you know, we did four comparisons the first time, three the second time, two the next time, one the next time. Uh, even though we figured out after our first pass that there's no out of order elements. So we can change the way that we do this uh, and we can set up a while loop as our outer loop. So let's do bubble sort three. Okay, so we've got to declare a couple of things here. The first thing we need is something called uh, a boolean called sorted uh, equals false. Okay, um, then we need to set up our outer loop counter. So that's i basically, so we can do i equals zero. And then we do a while loop and we can say while sorted is false, okay, and index is less than the length of data. Okay, so this part of the condition is essentially the count controlled aspect, right? That's basically this in, in a for loop. But we've kind of added in this extra 
uh, detail, this extra uh, part of the condition where we're only going to keep looping if we know that the array is not sorted, or rather, we don't know that the array is sorted. So what we then do is we then set sorted to true. Okay, so we're saying, let's consider this array as sorted until we find out otherwise. Okay, um, so now we do an internal loop. So we do for j in range uh, zero, just the same thing, uh, length of data uh, minus one minus i. Yeah, uh, if, I'm just gonna copy and paste this. Okay, um, so that's all the same, but there's one extra thing we've gotta do. So if this is true, if we detect the elements are out of order, then we say, okay, it wasn't sorted this time. So we've gotta set sorted to false. And that will mean that after this pass, we're gonna do at least one more pass. So sorted only stays true if we go through a whole pass without swapping anything. Okay, um, so that that's it basically. Okay, so let's run this and double check that we didn't break anything. Okay, so let's check, look at data again, unsorted, let's do bubble sort three. Oh, we have an error. Where's my mistake? Oh, sorry, this should be I, not index. Maybe you spotted that. Let's try again. Data, unsorted, bubble sort three data and you can see the data has been sorted perfectly. Okay, so the, here are three versions of bubble sort. Um, so you should be uh, comfortable working with any of these. Uh, I'm gonna always recommend this option as the most efficient. Um, you do get points in exams for efficiency in your algorithms in most cases. Um, you should be able to recognize bubble sort in any of these three forms. Okay, uh, so that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.